Welcome to part 56 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be looking at wind simulation, specifically the combination of wind simulation and cloth simulation. In this video, we'll be making a flag blow in the wind. Because it was just July 4th, the American holiday Independence Day yesterday, and a few days before that, on July 1st, it was my country's holiday, Canada Day, I wanted to give you a file with a bunch of flags in it. So you can find this file uh, to download for yourself in the description area below. What this file has is it has a bunch of planes that I've brought in uh, and put textures on. Um, I did this quite easily actually. What I did was I used the add-on in Blender called the import image as planes uh, add-on. And where you can find that for yourself is just up under the file menu in user preferences under the add-ons tab at the top. If you do a search for import You'll find it right in the middle. It's import, export, import images as planes. If you enable that uh, and then save user settings and close the preferences and you go to file and import, uh, it's right at the bottom, it's called images as planes. And what you can do is just select any image and it'll bring it into your scene um, and put the image texture on using nodes if you're using Blender Cycles. Let's go ahead and jump in though. What I'll do is I'll press seven to go to my top view and I'm in top orthographic. I'm gonna press A to deselect all, and I'm only gonna be working with my country flag in this video. Uh, sorry, the Canadian flag. Let's go ahead and because of that, select the other country's flags uh, quickly and delete them. By the way, what I found out when I was importing these flags is that yes, they are actually um, all different aspect ratios. In this file, all the flags are one blender unit high, or tall, but they all are different widths, and that's something that I learned just today. Let's go ahead and delete most of the flags, and I will just leave one to work with. Of course, you can work with the one that you wanna work with. Um, let's go ahead now and zoom in on one of the flags, and it's actually only one plane right now. So if I press tab to go into edit mode, there are no cuts yet, or subdivisions in it yet. So what I'll do is I'll press W on my keyboard in edit mode with everything selected, and I'll select uh, under the specials menu, subdivide. Uh, when I do that, down here on the tool shelf, I'll change my number of cuts up to uh, 50, and I'll press enter. So now I have a lot of subdivisions in my flag for it to bend and simulate the rippling of cloth. Okay, let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode and I will rotate my flag um, to be facing forwards or not just lying down on the ground. So I'll press R and then X and then nine zero and then I'll press enter. So R, X and then 90 and enter to rotate the flag to be facing forward. And I'm gonna add some cloth simulation. So over here with it selected under the physics tab in the properties window, I'll click on cloth and it brings up a whole lot of options here. I'll leave them for now. In fact, what I'll do is select um, cotton as the preset. I'm not sure if it is by default. Um, you can play around with all these values. It's really up to you. We will be looking at pinning in just a second. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I simulate. So I'll press play. Actually, I'll press go back to the beginning and then play or alt A on my keyboard. <laughs> okay, it's simulated, but of course, because cloth simulation happens in a physics environment, it just fell down because of gravity. I need to pin um, the corners of my flag, or in this case, we're gonna be simulating a flag blowing in the wind from a flagpole. So I'm gonna pin just the top part and the bottom part of the left side of the flag. To do that, what I need to do is go into edit mode, so I'll press tab, and I'm gonna select the vertices that I want not to be simulated. In other words, the vertices that I want to be pinned in their current location in space. To do that, what I'll do is I'll select the vertices I want to be pinned. So I'll select the top four and the bottom four um, on the left side of the flag. And over in the object data tab in the properties window, so it's a little triangle tab, there is a section called vertex groups. And this area, what I can do is I can define and name a group of selected vertices and save them to a group so I can refer to them later when I want the cloth simulation uh, to know that those are the ones that I don't want to be simulated. So in this area, I'll press the plus button. It makes a new group and with some vertices selected, I can reselect them uh, if I want. I'll do the top four and the bottom four. I'm going to assign these vertices to this group. I'll actually name this group first. I'll call it uh, Steve. Sure, why not? And I'll click on Assign. So now these vertices are assigned to Steve. I can 
I'll show you that if I deselect everything in my scene and I go to select Steve, there they are. They popped up again. So now I know that those vertices are assigned to Steve. Let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode and let's go back to the physics tab and under the cloth section with my flag selected, I'm going to enable pinning. And what this does is it lets me specify a vertex group that I want to be pinned. So if I click in this area, it lists all of my vertex group. There, Steve. I'll click on Steve. And now if I re-simulate, I'll press Alt-A. You can see that those vertices are not part of the physics simulation. They get pinned or glued in place. And I have a fairly realistic cloth simulation. You'll notice the flag went through itself, though. So what I'll do is I'll press Escape and I'll go down to the cloth collision section, which again, still with the flag selected. I'll enable self collision. I'll turn that quality up to maybe two. You can of course play with the quality settings, uh, which is in three places. Quality in terms of steps of the simulation, um, cloth collision quality, and quality of self collision. And again, I think what all three of these do is, uh, it's a number of times, so five times per frame, it's looking at the simulation of cloth or the, the collision between it and other objects and itself. So it kind of means subframes uh, or subframe calculations. Let's go ahead and add a flagpole because now we have collision, or we always did, but now we have two types of collision enabled. We want to have a flagpole for the flag to interact with. So I'll go to my, actually what I'll do, is I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and I'll add a cylinder uh, that's way too wide. So I'll press S and then Shift Z on my keyboard. And when I press S and then Shift Z, it will not scale, it negates the Z axis. So I'll scale that down to be quite narrow and maybe I'll scale it way up on the Z axis. So I can press S and then Z on my keyboard. Mm, that looks okay to me, S and then Z again, make, make it a little bit taller. And from my front view, I'll put it on the ground and I'll take my flag and I'll put it up next to the flagpole. It's in the right position, right about there. And let's make sure it's right from the top. Yep, it's looking pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and see how that works. Um, I actually need to enable my flagpole as a collision object though. I did that in the last video with the sphere that I draped cloth over. You have to make sure that the cloth knows which objects it should actually collide with in the scene. So I enabled collision on the flagpole just there. Let's go ahead and press Alt-A. Okay, so the cloth simulated, I got a little bit of a funny result though. Uh, I've had this a few times now with this file. Um, the cloth fell, but as it started to fall, the end of the flag bunched together for some very strange reason. So what you can do in this case, and the more you work with cloth, the easier it'll get, the more you'll get better results. Um, but when you're starting out with cloth, you will get a lot of funny results and you have to work with that. One thing I've tried is, I'll press escape on my keyboard to stop the, the playing of the simulation, is I might just try resetting uh, to a different cloth preset. So I'll move to leather and then I'll go back to cotton and that will reset the simulation because I've changed settings here. It still has Steve pinned, so that's great. Let's go ahead and try that again. I'll press Alt A. No, so it's still giving me some problems here. What I might try doing is under the cloth cache section is I'm gonna name this cloth cache, so I'll call it one, and I'm gonna add a new cloth cache, and I'll call it two, and as you can see with it selected, I need to re-simulate the cloth. I'm gonna try a different cloth preset. Um, I also might try upping the quality of the self collision um, to three in this case. Let's go ahead and try that again. I'll press Alt-A. All right, so I paused the video for quite a while there and played around with a lot of different settings in terms of the cloth presets, including different types of cloth like denim and leather and rubber and silk. And I got very different results each time, but I really wanted something to look like a thin and light uh, cloth for the flag. I also played around quite a bit with cloth collision settings. And what I discovered is that when you have an error like the one I just saw, in fact, I can simulate it again, hopefully, if I press Alt-A, and it simulates a few frames, the end of the flag bunches together, uh, that is a direct result, or at least the way you can solve that, 
is if I press escape on my keyboard to stop the simulation and I increase the quality of my claw simulation itself, right now it's at 7 which is pretty high, but if I bump that up all the way to 15 and I re-simulate, so I'll press back to the beginning and press play, the result will be a whole lot better. It will still take quite a bit of time to simulate or more time to simulate, but you will get a much better result and you might solve your errors just by increasing your quality. This is great and I'm getting lots of nice kind of neat wrinkles. I also increased the quality of the collision and self-collision so I have a quite a higher quality uh, simulation. But what I want to do now is add wind. So let's go ahead and press escape on our keyboard and I'm going to go and zoom out and I'll press shift C on my keyboard to put the 3D cursor back in the middle of my scene. That's shift C. It kind of centers your view and puts your 3D cursor back there. I'll press shift A now and I'm going to add something new, it's called a force field and as you can see there are lots of different types of forces or force fields. The second to top one is wind. So I'll add a wind force field and what this really is is an empty object, so one of those cross uh, objects with a modifier or physics uh, added to it so it has uh, abilities and properties under the physics tab. Let's go ahead and move it up and move it over. As you can see, it has concentric circles um, with an arrow pointing away from it. You can see that right there. And by default, its strength is very, very low and the wind is pointing up. Now it's important to know that this wind is not only limited to like a fan right here. This is actually the wind across our entire scene moving upwards because the, the wind is not limited to its own little tunnel, it's the entire scene. So what I'll do is I'm going to use my rotate tool, in fact I'll just use the R key, I'll go to my front view with the 1 key and I'll press R and 90 and enter to make it face towards uh, that direction and its strength is only at 1 right now. I'll turn it all the way up to 1,000. Yes, you need quite a bit. Depending on the weight of your fabric and the mass of your fabric, if I select it, you can see that there is mass right here, so um, you can turn, turn that down or you can change the size of your whole scene or your flag if you're early enough uh, in its production. Um, so with my wind selected, um, I've got to turn up to 1,000 and it doesn't really matter where I move it to because there is no fall off right now. It's just going to go forever from everywhere on this left hand side of my scene to the right. Let's go ahead and press Alt A to simulate now. I'll press back to the beginning and Alt A. Okay, I pressed escape because we weren't getting much of a wind result. So with my wind object selected, I'm going to turn the strength all the way up to 5,000. Yes, it needs that for some reason in this case. It wouldn't help to have the, um, the wind object right against the flag. Again, it comes from one side to the other and there's no fall off uh, because I haven't specified one yet. Let's go ahead and re-simulate that. I'll press Alt A. Okay, so we have now a cloth simulation with wind. The wind isn't quite powerful enough, even though we're at strength 5000, to make the flag truly blow uh, straight out. So what I might try now is changing the mass of my flag. Let's go ahead and press escape on our keyboard, and I'll select my flag, and its mass is 0 0.15. Um, so what I'll do is I'll click in there, and I'll say 0 0.05, so it's one third of the original mass and I'll go back to the beginning and I'll press play to simulate again. Okay, so I have a pretty darn good simulation of a flag flying in the wind. If I wanted to save this or bake that current cache, I could press escape on my keyboard and I could go down to my cloth cache section on the physics tab with the flag selected and I could press current cache to bake and I could render out my animation. By the way, in this file, I actually made the sky blue with white skylight. If you want to see my video on sky color versus skylight, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now, and there will be a link in the description to that video as well. So let's go ahead and render out. I'll go to my camera tab and press render. I have a blue sky, and the flag is there. I'm, my camera is not in a very good spot, though. Let's go ahead and in this view, I'll press Control, Alt, and Zero just to go to a camera view uh, from that angle and I'll press render again. Actually, I'll go to a different frame in the animation, I'll scrub through it, I'll find a good spot where it looks all ripply and nice, and I'll press render. 
Okay, we'll do a few more things to make this look even better. What I can actually do is I can animate my flag. What does that mean? Well, if I want the flag to fly up the flagpole or raise up the flagpole, I can just animate it like a normal object. Because we have a few pinned vertices, I can animate this flag, and essentially the entire thing will move as if it were being drawn up the flagpole because of those four vertices at the top and bottom that are pinned. So let's go ahead and go back to the first frame. Of course, this will erase our cache and I will move the flag down to the bottom of the flagpole uh, or down and I'm going to insert a keyframe so with the flag selected I'll press I on my keyboard and choose low quote scale or in this case I could just choose uh, location uh, in fact I'll do that and my cache went away let's go up to frame 70 and I'll move the flag up to the top and I'll press I again and choose location again. So now I have an animation of the flag going up the flag pole. Of course, when I scrub around, it wants to simulate the flag. Let's go back to the very first frame and press play to simulate. All right, so I went ahead and simulated. As you can see, it's raising up the flagpole and waving in the wind at the same time, and it stops at frame 70, and it kind of fills out in its blowing in that direction. The last thing I'll do in this video is I will press pause with the flag selected. I'll go to my physics tab again to the cache section. I've only simulated from frame 1 to 150, and that's okay. I'm going to bake this current cache so that it is now final. The very last thing I'll do is because we still have pixelation is I'll click on shading smooth on the tool shelf and I will add under the wrench tab with the cape selected in the properties window a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the flag to make it look all nice. Let's go ahead and zoom out and play the animation one last time. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.